<laughs> I look like the inverted Incredible Hulk. That means that this is this crop crotch region. Confirmed. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we're talking about a book that I was extremely excited about. The follow-up, well it's not like a sequel or anything, but Nathan Ripley's second book. Um, I read and loved his first novel, his debut, uh, Find You in the Dark. Absolutely loved that one. Um, and I couldn't wait. In fact, I've been hounding him on Twitter. Like, when's the next one coming? When's the next one coming? I'm sure he was tired of hearing me ask. But I finally got my hands on it. Atria Publishing was nice enough to send me a review copy of Your Life is Mine by Nathan Ripley. Um, the, uh, the TLDR this is, I'm, I loved it. Um, I loved every minute of it. Nathan writes the, the type of characters that I, that I want to read about. Uh, characters that I can either despise, that I can love, or that there's some kind of moral gray area. One of the things that I'm laughing because one of the things that I caught on early on, it's funny how if you pick just the right character name, that character doesn't have to say anything for you to know that they're, what kind of character they are. Uh, Nathan picked the perfect uh, name for Emil Chadwick. As soon as I saw that name, I was like, this guy is a douchebag. And of course, I, I don't want to give any spoilers, but I mean that name, right off the bat, that name is great. This story is about uh, the main character, Blanche. It's also written in a uh, first person, third person, even a little bit of a, uh, I guess it's epistolary, I think it's called. <laughs> I don't know. There's a bit, there's uh, sections not in here, uh, not of interviews, but there's sections in here written. Um, it's kind of like Carrie when you read excerpts from a book, a fictional book in the fictional world, and there's sections like that in here. So you have those sections, you have third person sections, and then you have first person from the main character, Blanche. Um, I appreciated that I had no idea where this was going at any point in time. Um, I, I had no clue where he was going to spin the tale next, um, and no matter what, every single chapter made me want to keep on reading. In fact, this is the first time in forever that I read a hundred pages in one sitting. I'm not, ta I'm not just talking about one day. Well, it was one day, but I didn't come back to it because I was kind of burned out after uh, just staring at pages after that. Um, I'm not a speed reader, so 100 pages takes me like 2-3 hours to read. Um, and I was just laying there, I was just reading, reading, reading. Um, the, I think the best part about this book is, of course, well, not I think, the best part of this book is the characterization. Um, there's a lot of dialogue in here, a lot of back and forth between Blanche and Jaya, Jaya, I'm not sure. Um, and that was some of my favorite dialogue throughout the entire thing, that, that relationship felt entirely real. Um, the, the friendship was deep, there was an emotional connection there. Um, I also appreciated the emotional connection with Padma, the uh, J Jaya, I want to say Jaya, so if I'm, if I'm getting that wrong I apologize, Jaya's mother, Padma. Um, there's, a, there's a dichotomy, is that right? Probably not, but there's a, there's a maybe a juxtaposition, because juxtaposition is a comparison I believe. But Blanche's father was a psycho cult, cultist leader, um, and then Jaya's, uh, Jaya's, I'm going to say Jay anyway, so, J-A-Y-A, -A, there you go, anytime I say something that sounds like that, you know who I'm talking about. Um, her father was uh, murdered in a random crime, um, shot to death. That whole, that whole thing, the back and forth, that whole subplot um, was terrific. Uh, there, there's also a bit of, I don't know if Nathan took from reality here, but uh, there was, and I don't want to give too much away, but you guys, any, anybody remember the Interstate Killer? Um, I can't remember the guy's name, I don't really want to say it here anyways. He had a kid with him. Um, I think Nathan borrowed from reality for that one. If not, then, you know, I'm, 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 I might be wrong. I don't know, but um, there were aspects of that in here, um, and I always appreciate seeing you know, real world stuff, like I said in my top five tropes video, in fact, this is what gave me that idea uh, to do that video was this book, because it, he might have, I don't know, I didn't talk to him about it, I probably should have, but um, he took that idea and then he fictionalized it completely and did his own thing with it, and I really like it when that happens. Um, completely different characters, of course, it's not like he said, hey, th these guys were cult or whatever, but... <clears throat> I also appreciated that the ending 
wasn't, and I'm going to get into spoilers at the end of this video, the ending did not go exactly where I thought it would. It had some, some aspects, but overall, this book completely caught me off guard. It's not your average, everyday thriller, and the thing that makes it stand out, like I said before, the best part about this book is the characters. He's a terrific character writer. He's one of those guys who can write about anyone, anywhere, at any time, and I would have fun reading it because he's writing about real people. He's writing about people that have real struggles, that have real, you know, con con conflicts going on in their heads. And all too often you have, um, especially in thrillers, you have either completely broken messes of people um, or you have people that are just stupid happy, that, you know, have the perfect lives, and then some, uh, Dean Koontz is a perfect example of that. Perfect life, all of a sudden it's utter garbage because someone snuck in and destroyed it. Now, while there is a little escapism there, I don't like those types of stories. I like stories like this one. Um, also, there's a little bit, I don't know if he read, uh, well, not Sharp Objects, but in, uh, in Dark, well, Dark Places, I think it's Dark Places, uh, Gillian Flynn's second novel. Uh, I believe, I'm not sure, but anyways, uh, Dark Places was a terrific novel, and there are notes of that in here as well. Now, I'm not saying he ripped anybody off, but there are notes of that. So if you like that book, you will definitely enjoy Your Life is Mine. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! Okay, so spoilers from here on out. I will do a book birthday for this, um... In, I probably should have said that it's not even out yet in the main video. Oh, well. Uh, June 4th is when this comes out. 6-4-2019. Um, so if you don't want any spoilers, if you want to read it for yourself, please, please, please click away. But this will be up there for everybody to watch um, when they finally do actually read the book. Um, the, uh, the whole... The, the whole shooter in the back of the car thing covered up with the tarp, whatnot, in the back of the truck, I think that was taken from the Interstate Killers a while back, which is insanely weird because I was working at a hospital that took care uh, in Montgomery, Alabama that took care of she eventually passed away the very I think it was the first victim um, I can't remember but um, she she was shot in front of the ABC store in Montgomery, Alabama and it ended up being the same duo of people uh, that went on the killing spree. I think they called him the interstate killer. I can't remember. But he was uh, laying down in the back of a car or van or something like that and shooting people with a rifle. So there's that aspect. Also, um, I really... I kind of saw it coming that Blanche um, was there. I actually I actually thought it was going to be Blanche who ended up killing Jaya's father. I thought that was going to be the twist. It wasn't, thankfully. Um, that would have been a cool twist. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't have been upset. I just would have saw it coming. So the twist, um, I don't know. But I, then again, I, would that have been redeemable? I don't think that would have been redeemable. So, you know, going that route would have made it more, I think, would have made it more a horror story. You know, whether you have that horror of, you know, you've built up this life with this friend of yours, and then you get to the, the end here and you have to come clean. That would have been... That would that would have been an interesting subject to dive into, I think. Um, but by that time, I mean the book's almost over, so <coughs> he doesn't have much. Sorry, I'm still getting over a cold. Didn't have much time to go into it. But uh, I I really love the back and forth when when they're fighting. I I love Jaya's Jaya whatever responses. Um, I I dug that whole thing. I especially liked uh, the boy character it was very odd. Um, it wasn't something that I, I thought for sure the whole time it was going to be a meal. Um, I was like, no, no, let me, let, let's not, there, all the signs are pointing that it's not him, or whatever, that'd be way too obvious. Um, having him as a character that nobody, nobody really knew was exceptional. I appreciated that there was no twist. That's another thing, you read these thrillers all the time, you're looking for the killer and you know the killer is someone that you know. So you're picking up, it's got to be this person, it's got to be that person. So it's a, ni it's actually a nice twist for me to get in there and go, Oh, he was actually just an, another character. Um, the Chuck Varner storyline was great. Uh, I appreciated the thoughts, the, the cynicism, the nihilism, and all that stuff. The, the, everything that was pumped into uh, Blanche when she was a kid. Everything that um, Chuck believed. Um, he's one of those cult leaders that you tend to... That you tend to, you you see where he's coming from. Not that he's right. I'm just saying you see where he's coming from, 
and he just goes way too far with it. That kind of that kind of madness. So I appreciated that. I don't know. It's gonna end up one of my books of the year um, unless something huge comes out to just stomp it into the ground. I don't know if it, the Institute by Stephen King will, will overshadow it or not. But this is the most fun I've had reading a thriller. Um, I'm trying to think. And I'm having a problem thinking of anything else. So yeah, this was this was big fun. Now, probably the last one that I read um, that could even be considered a thriller would be uh, hashtag Fashion Victim by Amin Akhtar. Um, that was a great book, terrific book, and that one's going to be up against this one for my favorite read of the year so far. That's the running right now. But I did like this one a bit more um, just because of the the character. That one, uh, Fashion Victim was more of a satire, and this one was more of a set in reality kind of thing. That's why I appreciated this one a little bit more. Not to say Fashion Victim isn't set in reality also, that th those people don't act that way. There just wasn't the depth of all the characters that I found in this one. But yeah, that's all I gotta say about this one. Nathan, if you're watching this, and I hope you do, I loved your book, man. Absolutely loved it. Talk to you later.